Good morning, viewers and listeners, wherever you are. Um, welcome to the studios of the Government Information Service. This is the next chapter, and with me this morning is Mr. Justin Hector. He's one of the team leaders at the Vector Control Department of the Ministry of Health. This morning, of course, we are going to be talking about mosquitoes, and we are going to be digging deeper into the fogging operations and what takes place behind the scenes over at the Vector Control Office. Mr. Hector, welcome. Morning to you. Yeah, thank you, and thank you to uh, good. Welcome to the, the viewers, those of you who are tuned in, and I'm sure there will be a lot that we will be able to share that you would um, find very interesting. And of course, we'll be able to um, disseminate some information that will be useful for you in terms of um, playing your part in controlling mosquitoes. Great. Um, having said that, um, your fogging operation continues this week. Um, you have been fogging for some time now. How is that going? Well, so far, it's been going pretty fine. And as I always say, <laughs> we would prefer not to be fogging because um, you no know, fogging is our last resort. And but so far, we have been um, achieving our goals of um, doing the areas which where we have found, um, in fact, uh, dengue cases in recent times. Mm -hmm. In fact, not all of the parishes have um, high incidences of cases, but um, those who are even uh, on a lower scale, we also pay attention to them knowing that um, dengue is something that can be spread and you only need one case in our community and we'll have a, we could do have a government an epidemic. Recently, um, Mr. James, your boss, we had a, a discussion right here on set and it was along the same lines and we decided to, to explore more as it relates to fogging and, and mosquito control and which is why we are doing it. Uh, a different segment of the show today um, and I wanted to, to get into for example what are some of the, the the surveillance methods and measures that you normally put in place from time to time I know I asked you today to bring on set some of the um, chemicals that you normally would use during your your routine operation let's let's get into that please yeah well um, all on entomological surveys are probably uh, the most important survey, the most important thing that we do, because this gives us uh, a, a clear indication as to what the state of affairs is out there. And that is, we collect data out in the field, and those data are used to determine, um, well, what, what high uh, areas that may, may be termed as high risk or low risk areas. And uh, when we say high risk, we're talking about uh, areas where it is Egypti mosquitoes is most prevalent. And um, where we, when we, we collect that data, we come up with what is called an index. Yeah? So those indices are used, indices are used to determine uh, what type of, uh, what type of, um, of uh, thing we do to in order to, to reduce the mosquito population. Mm -hmm. So our intervention will be based on that. No. those in nices right so um i know you go around with your team you take notes and um uh, is there a card that you all would normally leave at the home owners once again and, and, and what does it say yes um we usually leave a, a, a card that um that has a record of the date or findings a type of work and of course the inspector doing the inspection or carried out the inspection so that card if you go back there on a, on a, a, a subsequent uh, day or time date you will find all that information and it will tell you exactly what was the state of the compound or the household as the case may be when it was last visited whether it was positive and, and positive means that there were things to be found on that premises mm -hmm. yeah or whether it was negative meaning that Aedes aegypti were not found on that premises. So the card, the, this record is very important also. So it gives you a base. But however, um, as we enter into the technological world um, and, and we delve more into technology, you would find that a lot of these data, is now, data now and probably in the future will be collected electronically. We have um, done a, a, a short test and um, there is a few things still that, you know, when something is new, when you have a new, <laughs> especially with technology, yeah. 
it, it sometimes comes down to trials, testing, and making sure that, that the system really works for you because sometimes you, you, you have the softwares or the systems and they do not work for your situation in terms of what you do. So um, we have gathered a lot of data, a lot of information as far as that is concerned. So in the future, you may well find that we may be doing a lot more um, collection, data collection mm -hmm. via, via um, electronic, uh, the, the electronic uh, system. Now, um, you guys also has been relying, and it's all along the line of technology on the the GPS system. I know that you all have been 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 starting up some mapping to help you to better ascertain where you have incidences. What's the status of that as we speak? How is it progressing? Yes, well, I, to continue on what I was basically, I touched on that a little bit, but um, to go further into that. As I said, it, we haven't um, quite, one of the key imp components of, of that is uh, the same uh, issue that you mentioned about the card. What would replace the card would be uh, a barcode. Right. So, so yes, so all that information will be stored on the barcode when entered into data. And when, when, when we visit the, the household subsequently, once that barcode is scanned, all the information comes up. Okay. Yeah, and um, this will be able to be accessed. In fact, what we have done too is that we have set up a, a website, a vector control website, where um, all our indices, all our surveys, all the numbers, everything can be accessed at a click. Okay. So, um, for instance, you, if you want to access that information, you don't. You no longer have to call Mr. James or call me or call the secretary or call anyone. You can just simply go onto that website, and all of that will be there, and you can you can pull it down. So it's really um, it ties in with the whole Epi info. Right. Yeah. And 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 I guess also it will be of immense benefit to students, especially the SGUs, and you know even at the secondary and primary level who oftentimes come to the ministry for information on mosquito control and, and, and all of that data. And in my mind, I believe too, it makes the vector control um, officers work much more easier because when that data is accessible for the generation and preparation of reports, I think, you know, with the click of a button now, you may also be able to just summarize. So hence the reason why you guys can actually tell us where the incidences of, of mosquitoes are very high at this time. So I see that, that there is benefit from the entire technolo technological um, um, switch that you guys are making, right? Yeah, because every, everything changes and changes with time. And um, when you in an environment for a particular period, you want to make sure probably that <laughs> when you leave, you leave it better than, than you met it. We didn't have that before. Mm -hmm. When I came into vector control, that wasn't thing, but now it is. So it's, it's as you said, it's, it's for the whole betterment and the, the, to ease the whole uh, question of um, information and thing which might be readily. When you have all this information on paper, it's difficult sometimes to access it. Sometimes certain disasters, and so you lose all those data, as we have lost a lot of data over the years. Um, but as you say, technology right, makes that right in a sense, and um, it's there so anybody could access it later on. Okay, so Mr. Hector, um, 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 let's let's just take a look at the fogging that was done recently. Uh, I know that my switcher at the back, my good friend Shabazz, um, he already has some um, of the covers it run. So let us just just focus on what took place recently and just walk us through yes, so yes. viewers um, um that's one of the fogging um scenes that actually um took place in saint market was that's bonnet and um, um there you have one of the team members there um fogging the area um so, so Mr. Hector, just, just walk us through that process. What is happening there now and, and, and the whole dynamics of it? Yeah, well, the operator is, um, as you see, has a, a machine and is intricately going through and going around the houses one by one, each house, mm -hmm. and something going around the house and um, making sure that the fog not only uh, gets around the house, 
but uh, quite a bit of it goes into the house because mm -hmm. it is so important that that happens. Although looking at this, you can see like some of the windows are closed. But what is recommended is that uh, people should open up to allow the fog to enter to kill mosquitoes inside. Right. Because um, what you will find happening, if you lock them in, the concentration of insecticide that uh, smoke that they would get would not kill them. So therefore you would, you would reopen and you would get into the house to sleep and you will find that you still have problems. Mm -hmm. yeah? So what he's doing is, and he's doing that systematically from house to house, uh, premise to premise, uh, as, as he goes. Um, Shabazz, give me one of the other videos with the same fogging, um, because there's, there's something I, I found to be very interesting during that operation. Right. So they are working in teams, right? Yes, uh, uh, in pairs. In yeah. pairs, okay. Yeah. And that is important. So yeah, yeah, tell me why they are working in pairs. They are working in pairs because the, 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 the guy you see in front there, he is the air and the mouthpiece of the fogger who cannot communicate. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> with uh, someone or householders who may be trying to communicate with him. So that lead person are the one to do all the communication while the, the fogger really goes about his job. So he will guide him along and he will, you know, let him know exactly what is to, to be To be honest with you, I've been working with a diminishy for more than 10 years now. <laughs> I, and I never really knew why they always work in pairs. I mean, I see them work, working together, one in front and one kind the machine. And I wanted to know why, <laughs> yeah. you know? And, and, and so, so you see, it's good information, right? <laughs> because. Here I am today learning, and, and, and I guess my, 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 my viewing audience as well, they, they are being told why you see. So it's not that they have to speak directly to the, the guy who is operating the fogger. No, and we, we want to urge, urge them and we like to, to, you know, if they have need to communicate, because sometimes you go into areas where people may be suffering or may, may respiratory illnesses and stuff, mm -hmm. they may have children or they themselves, and they would want to let that, make that known to us. Mm -hmm. That lead person, is the one they should communicate with. Right. Sometimes they wait until the fogger come. Mm -hmm. This is a, a little bit, yeah. so they should look for that lead person who is always with that person, communicate with them because the fogger will never be able to hear or to communicate with them. Because I guess way. the machines no, are loud, very loud and then they also wait for and, 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 so and stuff and so on. Okay, okay, so that's, that's the importance of yeah. having someone walk along with you in that. Very much so. And then another thing is the alternates. Mm -hmm. So the man who is using the machine now, the machine will run out of charge, which is gas and insecticide. When this is recharged, the next person <laughs> operates the machine, and the one who is operating now at the moment Become becomes the lead, the lead okay, person. Okay, right, right, right. No, 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 no. Oh, what about dogs and so on? You may go into an area. No, I know for, for a fact that my dog home, once you start to fog and you hear all of the noise and you seeing the smoke, it gets crazy. Would that lead person also be able to tell his partner where there might be a dog or something, you know, so um, to be careful? Um, yes, he, he will do that. But what, from experience, what we notice is that um, we haven't had much of a concern as far as that is, con uh, as far that is concerned. Because dogs generally uh, cannot uh, tolerate noise, loud yeah. noises, mm -hmm. and they would normally run away. Yeah. From the from the area of the noise wherever the noise is coming from. But I, but so, but if the dog is tied, yeah. at least the lead will have. Yeah, but um, even if you pass relatively close to that dog, they tends to maybe try to protect themselves and okay. go and not attack the the person or the noise as it is. So we have not had incidences where um, foggers or operators have been attacked in any way by dogs or, or and lack of knowledge of knowing that there are dogs in the yard as the case might be whether tied or, or, or not okay viewers um we are going to take a short break and um, we will be back so stick up and stay with gis for the next chapter
Remember, if you have flu symptoms, do the right thing and stay at home to avoid giving it to others. Remember, you can be infectious up to a week after developing symptoms, so rest up and take it easy. Welcome back, viewers. Welcome to the GIS Television Studios with me, Kevin Frederick, and of course, Mr. Justin Hector, team leader at the Vector Control Department. We're talking fogging, and this morning you are tuned into the next chapter. Mr. Hector, before the break, we looked at fogging, and I just want to take this opportunity here to read out some of the areas that will be fogged later today. Um, Monday, 26th April. The fogging team from 5 p.m. today will be at the Grand Dance Housing Scheme area and that also will include the Frequenty Industrial Park area. So residents of, of Grand Dance, if you live in the Frequenty Industrial Park area or in the Housing Scheme area, from 5 o'clock this afternoon, look out for the vector control guys. They will be there fogging. We, we ask you again to please open up your doors and windows so that the fog can enter and kill the adult mosquitoes. That is very, very, very important. And it's also important in ensuring that um, you enjoy a very good night to rest tonight and you know, uh, for the young communities as well um, to, to, to ensure that we keep the incidence of, of dengue under serious control because dengue is is currently on the rise in Grenada again and it all has to do with what you do you must play your part to ensure that we all can enjoy a better Grenada you know free of illness mosquito related illness like dengue and chick fee and you know Zika and what have you so um, remember this five o'clock this afternoon the fogging team will be in the Grand Dance Housing Scheme area as well as the Frequenty Industrial Park area. And tomorrow, Tuesday, 27th, at the same time, they will be in the Limes and that will also include the Housing Scheme area. So remember this today and tomorrow, the fogging team of the Vector Control Department will be Grand Dance Housing Scheme, Frequenty Industrial Park and the Limes. Look out for them, cooperate with them, and we are going to all get through this together. Mr. Hector, let me come back to you. Um, now, we have a lot of viewers out there, and they might be wondering what we have in these two bottles there. Um, take me through it. I, uh, yeah. It looks like seasoning, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. let me hear what actually um, um, we have here, and what they're used for, and how you guys use them during your work well um, let me start from the one which is probably easier recognized that is the one that looks like the sand mm -hmm. or it look a bit like asham in november uh. but again <laughs> it is of course sand eh? right it oh, is sand. yes it is 99 percent sand and only one percent active ingredient only one percent insecticide it is called temifos mm -hmm. but we just call it a bit because it is indeed a bit mm -hmm. yeah uh, it is uh, placed in water, and water used for domestic purposes, drinking purposes, we put it in the water. And it is measured at one tablespoon for 55 gallons or 50 gallons. So it's one drum. It, let's make it simple for everyone. Right. So if you have a drum home, mm -hmm. 
and the, the inspector comes around to do the inspection. Right. In fact, we, we hope we don't have to even use the EBIT because you would keep your drum in a manner such that you would not be able to bring mosquito that is properly covered and, mm -hmm. and so on and well kept. But we know that is never the case and will never always be the case. So what mm -hmm. we do in this case, we, water that you use for domestic purposes, we will use the EBIT, some okay. EBIT in it. So, so you mean like, like for the washing maybe you know, of agricultural tools and, uh, and so on? Yes, we'll get to that. Um, we can use another product that we have there, okay. which is, uh, um, and uh, we want the public to understand something to Kevin. Sometimes we take this thing for granted, eh? mm -hmm. and um, we expect to have this, this, for use whenever the, the, people, the workers come around. But sometimes we do not consider the economics. Right. Yeah, and it's important that we stress that because <laughs> it, 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 it costs almost about $6,000 yeah, for a term of EBIT, for the, of, of EBIT, as the case may be. It costs, it costs a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot for this. So it's not something you would want to exploit it's not something you'd want to overuse mm -hmm. or, or to use badly because it costs the authority, the government, a lot to bring this or to, or to, or to have this to, for use. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that we stress that, you know. So the thing about it is that if we, if we, 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 are, we practice proper uh, ways of keeping those containers, we would have to either not, well, I wouldn't say not use this, but use far less than that, yeah? And again, another thing we need to understand, <laughs> and we could put that in the context, Kevin, of COVID. No insecticide is safe. However you want to look at it, I could say that. Yeah? So you would want, not probably, as a householder, most of the time, to have to have insecticide in water that you're using. Right. So it's your responsibility, as I said earlier now, for these, for householders, to see it as the duty to ensure that mosquito do not breed on the compound. Especially water you may use for domestic purposes, that it is safe and it is properly uh, maintained and kept so as not to uh, ensure mosquito breeding. And if that doesn't happen, then we don't have to worry too much about using this, yeah? So as I say, this is the main use, the, the use of it. We use it in probably think tanks and cisterns and so on, water people use domestically, yeah? So, and, 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 and we see um, like sometimes in the dry the season, people will have to rely a lot on their tanks. So I guess having to use this constantly over a period of time, as, as you, you, you said, I mean, must be of some concern to, to not just the, the homeowner, but to public health. Because yes. we want them to understand that, um, yeah, you might be able to use that, but it, it, it's just as with everything else, you know, you should not have an over reliance too much, like like we say, you drink responsibly. Yes, and uh, maybe the ladies probably, when they take their turn here, will talk a little bit about resistance mm -hmm. and resistance testing and, and some of the stuff we do at the laboratory. Mm -hmm. And resistance come about as a result of uh, ill use. Okay. Of insect of this insecticide because um, maybe having to 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 you to be used over and over and over, over time, the mosquitoes would re uh, develop resistance as we have seen mild resistance in certain parts of the country mm -hmm. so far al already. Hence the reason why again to now in a sense where we have started using this product now that looks brown and nice like chocolate. Mm -hmm. We've started using this product, which is called BTI, which is really a bacteria. It is not an insecticide, mm -hmm. unlike this. Okay. EBIT is an insecticide, BTI is a bacteria, mm -hmm. and it is a natural bacte bacteria from the soil. Okay. What it does is um, uh, EBIT will kill the larvae almost. This also kills, but what it does is that it prevents the, it's a, a growth inhibitor. Mm -hmm. It prevents the, the larvae from developing fully into adult, into adult, adult. Okay. Yeah. And one of the things it does also, this brand of BTI is that it also has a, a oil which acts as a film on the surface of the water. So this gives us added, added uh, uh, protection in the sense that um, if, even if they have not ingested that amount, but at least 
um, the, 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 the oil on the water, the, that covers the water, would act as a film and will suffocate the larvae in the, in, in the water. We had, uh, have uh, suggested, though, uh, we have advocated, though, that this should not be used in drinking water. It's not right. ideal for use for drinking water. Okay. And it, it is probably more important even than the ABT because I'll tell you why. Um, during the, and I say important in the sense that people complain from period time to time about incidences of mosquito breeding. Mm -hmm. Not every time you hear mosquito, they are, it is Egypti. Because it is Egypti mosquitoes is primarily a debiting mosquito. Mm -hmm. But one of the most, one of the most amount of complaints that, that we have is from nuisance mosquitoes. Right. When you can sit in a veranda in the evening after six o'clock, Mm -hmm. and so on and so forth because these mosquitoes are most active these nuisance mosquitoes are most active at night at evening into night yeah so here is where this comes in now we are in a position where we can treat open water bodies okay yeah now i could tell you um five pounds of this can treat as much as about, about an acre of water okay so, so you see the effectiveness, really. Mm -hmm. And now we can deal with, for instance, you have swamps in various areas like uh, River Sali, um, Batwe, Lansapin, Chublu, Kalis. Those areas during the rainy season are low-lying areas. And of course, there are a lot of swamps. A lot of these have been used. So would that be the same chemical that you use um, in the Clarkscoot Bay area? I know that we, we did some, 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 some time back. And you guys went about and you were like broadcasting. You, you just grab and yeah, yeah. that's this. This is what we use, yeah. Okay. This is what we use. Okay. The, it is ideal for that type swamp and marsh mm -hmm. drains and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And water people doesn't use. In fact, any water that is not used for domestic purpose or for right. drinking or so, the BTI is in. So, and as so I said, it's a. Uh, so so this is very effective. Very, very effective. And um, we, in fact, are putting more em emphasis on the use of BTI. And because we expect that pe water that is used domestically are normally in not great quantity. I mean, not, in fact, not many. You will find areas where, yes, there would be a lot, a lot of germs and stuff, but most of the time people do not even use it for drinking because mm -hmm. they are kept outside and stuff yeah, and yes, so on and so yes. forth. So it's, it now gives the ABIT a chance to recover. Yeah, so probably you will find that more of this will be used, so less of this will be used. So therefore, the issue of resistance is one that we would not be of great concern to us for a while to come, mm -hmm. because and the importance of that is that ibit is the only insecticide that is being used worldwide now that is still very effective, maybe ninety-eight percent okay. kill of, of our mosquitoes. So um, I still want some more information on the ibit. Eh? Um, the application. So your officer visits someone's home and after the investigation, they decide that they will use the EBIT. I, um, um, oh. What method you use to apply it? It's a tablespoon. One we tablespoon. Use, we use a tablespoon. As I say, it's, measure, it's a tablespoon, 250 gallons, yeah. or to a drum. Right. And um, you use it based on the capacity. So they go out with the measurement yes, yes, apparatus well, and so on yes, and, 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 yes. and do the necessary So thing. most of them probably on a day will go out with that, uh, that this amount of, of either uh, BCI and AB. Yeah? Wow, okay. So yeah, so um, yes, and if, it, if there is need to use the EBIT, it's, this, it's the same type of application. Uh, yeah. So to the viewing public, whenever you see the officers out there, don't think that they are just lying in, eh? They're not mm -hmm. idling and thing because you see they carry the stuff in their bag and they have to be walking to the different households to do their bits. And and also if you have dogs and thing, remember to keep your dog in its kennel or keep it on a leash so that it does not harm the inv the officers when they are going out there to conduct their job. I know that we had instances of that. Dog and, bites, and yeah. Yeah, and that's very, very, very serious and important because if the officer cannot reach your home to put on the habit and so on, you could come down with dengue, you know, chick V and Zika and thing, and then you may end up in hospital or dead. So the reality is that um, we must work in partnership, yeah? Allow the officers to do the work 
and 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 because remember it's a service that we are providing that is going to benefit you and your family likewise so i mm. I, I i thought i had to make that plug here because no i'm being told that they walk with so they walk with a backpack <laughs> yes, yeah. they have the the measurement device they have all of the you know chemicals and everything and they go yes, around doing yes. all of that how many households on average per day one team may do Mr. Hector? well an individual may do an average of about 25 30 houses a day one individual yes an individual so you see <laughs> the so people are working <laughs> you know yeah. they are working don't feel because you see them afterwards and then you know, well, you know they have not worked for the day because you're talking about and that's sometimes they have to to walk right they have to so you drop them like for example in Guav. Yes. And when they are deployed in Guav, they go different areas. Yes, yeah, so like it's 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 systematic because what mm -hmm. happens is that um pe people work like basically towards each other. So mm -hmm. there would be an average of about 50 60 houses mm -hmm. between two inspectors. Okay. Yes. And they they work until they come and they met and they meet each other. At, at a, a certain point. point. Okay. Yes. This point isn't quite cut out, mm -hmm. but they would based on like mm -hmm. for some they, some areas there may be less houses in, in houses in and between, so that person is able to move on a little bit quicker, or less um, things that they would have to look at or treat. And one of the things also we um, we stress is the importance of communication and uh, of course education, because this is part of our integrated approach to vector control. Not only do we use um, insecticides or uh, pesticides, uh, as the case may be, we also uh, use uh, biological treatment, mm -hmm. that is fishes Fish and stuff yeah. and so on and so forth. Uh, but education is key because what we always try to implore on our inspectors is that they should spend as much time as they can with the householder right. and discussing and talking about mosquitoes and helping to understand mm. helping them to understand most of the things that we are even saying here yes. you know mm. is vitally important and we also want to urge householders out there to to feel free engage the workers when they're in your community mm -hmm. you know <laughs> we are not we they are not there to impose and in fact we learn more from from you the the the, the community than <laughs> anything else because we need you to help us. We need you to 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 let us know where problem where some of the problems area we may be. Remember we come into communities that we don't know, we don't live. You are the ones who are there. You complain a lot about this. You may tell us about a drain um down down the road. You may tell us about uh, a, a, an old tank that may be somewhere. Mm -hmm. So all these are vital inter information and interaction that we encourage. You know? So we want to make sure that um when we come you know you see us we, we don't in fact kevin even with this you're still as householders responsible as i said for your compound mm -hmm. and for ensuring that mosquitoes do not breed on your compound it is still very much your responsibility yeah we come and we try to help in any way we can yeah in the, in most ways we can doing the treatment is not the solution we will prefer your source reduction. We will prefer, if pr prefer that if you has receptacles that uh, isn't useful or you do not need to keep, get rid of them. Get rid of them. Yeah, get rid of them. In that way, you cannot hold water. You cannot bring mosquito. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is the important thing, and that is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. You may see us once, twice a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about that? 365 days a year? So for 363 days. We, we are not we are not uh, on your compound are we not in your community well you correct because the mosquito destruction act of 1952 says that um the homeowner is responsible for mosquitoes bred on their property yeah. and that the offense for such a penalty can be two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on summary conviction in the first instance yes. and five hundred dollars subsequently um but shabazz i want you to bring up that video with the interview with mr hector and we'll take a break So this this basically would have summarized what you did, right? Sorry. Um, I'm not sure if we are getting the audio quite. Um, the audio is a bit um, low. But um, Mr. Hector, tell me, um, 
on that day, we spoke about, well, you, you, you more or less gave us a rundown as to what took place and, 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 and um, how you ended up in St. Um, Mark. Mark. Yeah. Um, having fogged the area, um, what can you tell our viewers now? Well, we got to St. Mark from St. John. In fact, we started uh, out in St. John. Um, and in fact, in, in, in that's, that's uh, to the north, but we started in St. George's, some areas of St. George's, Cherry Hill and mm -hmm. Fontenoy and, and so on and so forth. And um, also in Goa. As I said, we were targeting areas where uh, there were, we saw cases, yeah? Okay. And this we needed to nip this thing in the bud before it, 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 it got out of hand. So uh, from the southern part of the island, we moved to St. Uh, John. Mm -hmm. We did the, uh, the Tongue of Guav, Loreto, uh, Dr. Bell, and those areas. And we must also let people know that some of these areas I call, for instance, Dr. Bell, um, Guav Estate, those areas are deemed high-risk areas. Okay. And they are deemed high-risk areas because of the indice, uh, the indices, as I said. Mm -hmm. And to give you, put it in perspective, um, we, we, a safe index is something around five, under 5%. Okay. Yeah? So if every uh, five in every hundred house, yeah, mm -hmm. houses, yeah, you consider it safe if you find mosquito breeding. Um, but we have areas where indices are 27 and 30 percent. Okay. <laughs> Some communities, yeah. Mm -hmm. This, of course, is uh, <laughs> is really, I mean, cause for concern because if there is a, an outbreak, mm -hmm. because of the amount of mosquitoes, it is GPI mosquitoes that may be present. Transmission now becomes more likely and okay. far easier. Wow. Yeah. All right, well, viewers, um, um, stick and stay with us. We must take a commercial break now. And when we return, we have two lovely ladies, intelligent ladies from the Vector Control Department who will be joining me right here on set. And we are going to be turning up this show some more because you'll get an inside look as to what we normally do yes don't go nowhere we will be right back spread diseases so cover coughs and sneezes please not with a rag or bandana they trap germs when you use the rag again you put germs on your hands and everything else you touch when you cough or sneeze cover your mouth and nose with tissue throw the tissue in a bin and wash your hands afterwards if you don't have a tissue cough into your sleeve or elbow alcohol-based hand sanitizers are also effective in cleaning hands Dreaming of 
of taking a break and escaping to an idyllic, happy place? Well, finding it does not require you to go too far. You already live in paradise. All it takes is for you to go out and discover it. Grenada, Karakou, and Petit Martinique are blessed with a wide variety of accommodation that satisfy any taste and budget. Find the one that suits you and your family and treat yourself while having peace of mind that your health and safety is a priority. Knowing that we have gorgeous waterfalls, stunning beaches, and flavorful cuisine, let's be tourists in our own islands and enjoy paradise at home. Welcome back viewers and this is the next chapter we are live from the GIS television studios in St. George's Grenada. Before we took the second break I told you that we had some very lovely ladies from the vector control department who would be joining us here in the set and I am blessed to have those two ladies. I call them two of our very own Grenadian mm -hmm. scientists. Yes, mm -hmm. you know I, I, I call them scientists because they work with the vector control department um, um, and I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. My name is Sharon Olas. Mm -hmm. I work at the Vector Control and I'm a health inspector, place okay. at the lab. Okay, and you miss? My name is Ron Nachal. I work at the um, Ministry of Health Vector Control. I'm also placed at the lab. Okay. Um, Shireen and Rhonda, welcome to the next chapter. Welcome to GIS. Thank you. Shireen, so you're in the lab. Um, what do you do on a daily basis? Tell us. Well, on a daily basis, we we do mosquito identification. We um, also do ovi trapping, mm -hmm. like to collect lavas. Um, we also, on mostly on Fridays, we place the BG sentinel trap in the hospital, mm -hmm. yet to reduce the the mosquito population up at the hospital yeah. but only general hospital or also at the other hospitals but presently only at the general hospital okay mm -hmm. all right and 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 mr hector did see that um from time to time you guys will will observe that there is some level of resistance and, and he made mention of that when there is an over reliance on the, the the, the insecticide, right? Eh? 
So I guess part of your, your work too will be for you to determine um, whether or not there is resistance and how common it happens. Yeah. So when you get samples, how do you go about doing your, your identification with your scopes and all? Well, we use the ovichar mm -hmm. to collect the eggs mm -hmm. and the ovichar is being placed at a particular place but mostly in hidden areas for mm. person not to interrupt with the with the traps. And after it is collected, we brought it back to the lab, but we leave it like about five, five to seven days. And then after it is collected, we put it to dry and then place it under a microscope to identify the type of egg that is collected. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, uh, my friend down there, I see you smiling. Um, 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 tell me something. With the OV trapping, when you and Shirin are in the, the lab, how long is that process for you to then extract the eggs or whatever it is and, and come up with your different analysis? Now, I do not know what you all do, eh? so you had to walk me through this thing because that is your area. I'm here and you guys are out there and that's why I said that you all are the, the two scientists. Whatever you all come up with and you all tell Mr. Hector and them this is what it is, mm. I guess we had, had to work with that because that's what the scientist does, right? Yeah. So you my scientist friend down there, tell me what's going on. Okay, after we bring back the eggs to the lab mm -hmm. to extract it from the paper mm -hmm. and put it in water mm -hmm. and well we leave it there for like a few days. Mm -hmm. Well, we will monitor it too, even though too soon. And then maybe about a day or two after, you will see the, the lava um, in the water. Mm -hmm. And how is it extracted? Mm -hmm. What do you use to, to remove it from the water to be a salt? We have pipettes that we use, mm -hmm. like we pick it up, we could put it, like we have bottles, sometimes we put it in the bottles, we put it in glass also, so it could stay there. We have, um, we have a trap in the lab where we put the glass inside, so it will emerge to adults also. Okay, so so you could see all of that happening in real time in your lab. Yes. Mm. Now, so right, just demonstrate for me how you you, you over trap and so on box because I I guess the, the viewers would would also okay. like to see it. You know, I mean we're not going to plug it on uh, on the you know oh, electrical this is circuit, but okay. This is what we use for over trapping. Mm -hmm. To collect the eggs, and this is the paper we use. Okay. So, as you can see, it has egg on it. Okay. So when we um bring it back to the lab, we have a tray that we put the water in, and then we put the paper in the tray. Mm -hmm. And that's how it will um, emerge, emerge from the paper. Okay. And then the lava now, if we want to use it, like we will take the pipette. As we say, and take it out and put it. We have little bottles, also in glasses, mm -hmm. and then we leave it there, and then it will emerge, emerge to the adult mosquitoes. Okay, and when that happens, now um, um, what's the next process? Well, we use the adults to do. Reason we used to do the testing, to the resistant testing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 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 you, so you 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 telling me that 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 all of that technical um, aspect of your work takes place right at the vector control yes. department, right? Yes. And and how, it's just two of you guys alone. Yes, two present working in that. Right? Yeah. yeah. So do you all do you all um, get samples from all over the island? Yes, we do from time to time. Right, and so when the samples come in, 
you will then do your analysis so you know well, maybe like what came from St. John, yes. St. Mark and yeah. so on. And I guess there is a record keeping yes. so you can know. Yeah. Right. How do you test for resistance, Shireen? Well, we, the testing, the type of testing we, we use is the CDC bottle by USA testing. Mm -hmm. And these tests are, well, these tests are used with bottles and the four different type of insecticide. Mm -hmm. And one of the insecticide we use are Maratian. We also use Delta Metrin, Pometrin and Alpha Cypometrin to do the to test the resistance of the mosquito. Mm -hmm. And once the mosquito is placed in the bottles, the test measure measures the time it takes for the insecticide to produce the mosquito mortality. Okay, so you see why I said that you are scientists because I'm still <laughs> confused. I, uh, so, 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 so you guys will keep a record, a time yes, as yes. to when it was placed there and everything and yes. right up to the end stage. Yes. And you also would be required to document that for further checks or maybe analysis later on. Yes. Now, um, is any of that stuff sent maybe to SGU or, you know, CAFA anyway? I mean, just to, to complement what you guys are doing? Yes, we, when the test has been done, we send it to CAFA. And talking about CAFA, when we do the overtrapping, we also send some of the samples, the egg samples to CAFA also. Okay. And then, we'll, then they will give, give us a feedback as to what they got from the, the eggs. Okay. So oftentimes, it's safe to see that CAFA then validates what you guys would have found. Yes. Oh, interesting. Now, um, um, from, from, from your own experience, right, how has working in the lab been for you as, you know, a young lady? And I'm, I'm asking you this because people we see you guys already and they may not understand the importance of your work they just see you as a vector control officer here i am now i, I see you as a scientist because i no in all honesty i do not know how you go about doing all of those things and you know the mosquito identification and what have you and what have you so i mean i mean tell me about that well it's a good experience mm -hmm. we get to see the different type of mosquito are we still learning too? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so it's a great ex experience. And for you? Well, it's a great learning process also, and it's a great experience for me too. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. There are there are other young ladies out there. You know, maybe coming through the secondary school. You know, just about leaving and thing. And um, do you think this is a good career opportunity for them? I mean, you know, because we understand the importance. Of, of mosquito identification, mm -hmm. vector control of course, and, and it's one of the key pillars of public health because without you guys, there could be a lot of old bricks, right? Mm -hmm. And let's take, for example, Chick V and Zika, and even dengue right now. Um, the country relies on you guys to do the necessary groundwork. Yes. That's pre and post. That is to tell us what we are up against and then post that is to go and do all of the fogging and the ovi trapping and you know day collection and so forth and 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 i mean people oftentimes will not see that as as good career opportunities um what would you want to say to young people out there who might be seeing you guys just doing this and not understanding what go on behind this scene so to speak well what i want to say is that um, being a vector control officer is a good thing because it helps protect the nation from virus like dengue, Zika, and it also protects us from um, it also protect us as a household. It also protect householders. Mm -hmm. And also, Grenada is a wild from these viruses. 
and 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 well i'm getting ready for my 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 third break but before i do that i, I wanted to ask you though about the microscope um who taught you all of those things um mostly we got training from kafa okay yeah so kafa has been training you guys providing that level of training with respect to how do you use the the microscope. Yeah. So my good friend Gavi is there and he's focusing now. <laughs> Pretend for me that there is a, a mosquito on that scope. Let me see how do you do all of your little scientific thing now. Go ahead. And this is a over chop uh -huh. and it can, it, as you can see it has eggs on it. Right. But you know you can't see exactly with the naked eye. Like, yeah, with okay, the, good. So then you put it on there. And then after that, it is placed on the microscope. Mm -hmm. Let me see what you think. Viewers, you're looking at our female scientist here from the Vector Control Lab. That's, that's Shirin Hulas, Miss, Mrs. Hulas, right? Normally, we use a bigger microscope mm -hmm. so then the paper could. We could adjust it okay. how we want to. And then there is a light we put on, mm -hmm. and then as fast as we. And then after that, you adjust the microscope so then you could see the visibility of the eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's how we identify the type of eggs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so. Okay. Sorry? Also, under the microscope, we are able to count the eggs. Oh, so you're yeah. able to, to count how many eggs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is right. So you're telling me <laughs> that sometimes you make... Okay, how many eggs, maybe from past experiences, you were able to count on one uh, um, sheet like that? Well, let's say uh, two, 200 and, and up. Yeah, it depends. It depends on the popular. <laughs> population of the mosquito where we place the trap. 200 plus yes. eggs on that little piece of paper? Yes. And you're able to see all of that under the microscope? Yes. yes. Amazing. Viewers, we'll take a break right now and we will be right back. Don't go anywhere. that's happening in Grenada? Then tune into the Government Information Service on channels 12 or 22 or follow us on our live stream gov.gd forward slash tv. Get in the know with government press conferences, informative interviews, community projects, the national report and much more. The Government Information Service, keeping the people of Grenada informed. Viewers, 
Thank you again for joining us and welcome back to the next chapter. I'm Kevin Frederick and we're live from the GS Television Studio. This morning we're talking mosquitoes, we're talking dengue. And I have two lovely Canadian scientists with me here, uh, Miss Charles and Miss Hulas. And before the break, we were looking at the microscope and what they normally do. And I was surprised to know that on this very little piece of paper here, sometimes they would ch check upwards of 200 mosquito eggs, right? Yes. And so can you imagine, guys, what they would pick up from your whole muscle? You know, just with the collection of, you know, some water and, you know, you know, using the paper dropper and what have you. And they put on that on the paper and then afterwards, there's a whole colony of mosquito breeding in your backyard. This is serious business. And they are demonstrating here the different bits of equipment that are used in the performance of their duties. And Ms. Holas will now take us to another um, piece of equipment that they use from time to time and her colleague will, will do some demonstration. So guys, it's over to you. That's your show. I'm just here to learn, so teach me. So this strap we have here is the Biogen Sentinel-2 trap and it was developed for the use against Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus species and with CO that is carbon dioxide it is it catches other mosquito species and also blood sucking insects and this strap was has been placed in the general hospital Okay, so that's the one that you would normally use often at the yes. hospital. So how basically it works? You, what, you had to plug it on or do something or put chemicals in it, something to attract mosquitoes or what? Yeah. But this strap um, must be plugged onto the current. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, yeah. So, mm -hmm. I, so I see the, um, that's the, the power supply, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This here is the attractant which attracts the mosquito. The so attractant. Can, yeah. So, so does it does it have a smell or yeah, it, it have a strong scent? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And does it like lights and so on? So like it would. No, it does not light. So no light. No, just the the scent mm -hmm. they will get, and they will come to the trap. Okay. So do you look? Is it a case whereby before you put it on, you have to make sure you put in the chemicals, whatever it is. Well, the attractant yeah. inside of it and then you seal it back and carry it go well um once it is set up the attract attractant is placed here mm -hmm. and it lasts up to five months five months yeah well, five months okay but once it is placed here we don't interfere with it until okay. the scent started to fail okay yeah so how does the mosquito get into the trap this uh, uh, <laughs> i want to learn that I see you have a, a device in your hand. Uh, this is the this is the catch net. Mm -hmm. This is what catches the adult mosquito. Mm -hmm. And this here is uh, the funnel net. This way the mosquito goes down inside. It cannot fly back up. So so in this cup like it has two pieces of nets, right? Yeah, two pieces of nets. Okay. So it goes is, in. It have the catch bag and it have mm. the funnel net. Mm. Yeah. Can you just turn it around? Let me say right. Yeah, the camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's so, so it flies in there. Yeah. And the first net is where it enters, but it acts as a as, as a, a gate. Funnel, yeah. So you can't go back out. No, it cannot because fly. There's a fan inside. Uh huh. So the fan, once it enters, the fan is spinning, so it won't be able to to fly back out. No. Okay interesting very interesting and so do you place it on the ground or you have to hang it up somewhere you know or, or something or it can work either way well it can work either way mm -hmm. yeah and the the fan also um the fan also is there to kind of as the attractant is there the fan kind of is also there to send out the the, oh, okay. The, the same from so, the attractant. So, okay, and, and, and that way to other mosquitoes can come in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So which part of the hospital would you normally put on a trap like oh can this trap work for example by a school, a hotel, I mean like almost anywhere, right? Yeah, almost anywhere. Mm. And have you used it other places other than the hospital? No, we haven't. Okay. So so what time of the day would you set up that trap? Well presently the trap is at the hospital right now. Okay. So you have and one at the hospital? Yeah. Okay. And we visit the hospital every Friday mm -hmm. to check the bags to see what is how much mosquito is there and how much it catches. Mm -hmm. And we also empty the bags mm -hmm. after and then we place it there again for until the next Friday. Okay. Mm -hmm. So does that tell you um um what species of mosquito that is around the hospital and do you also get a sense as to um, the population of mosquitoes how much mosquitoes you have circulating in the hospital area just by using that device yes mm -hmm. yes it does well since we started using this strap it tells us when the population of mosquito is high and mm. when it is low. Normally when we visit it, sometimes it will be less than other oh, days. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. So you know definitely once you have a lot, yeah. you're a real mosquito around me. Mm -hmm. And when it's not that filled, so you know it's, you know, they are hardly, well, they're not around the hospital that uh, that much. Mm. And, and I know too that you guys also fog up and, and do the the beating and so on by the hospital and thing. Is this a, a daily something or weekly? Daily No, I, I was saying that I know that your team, you have um, vector control officers yes. who I, I have seen around the hospital many times, you know, with the beat and, and so yeah. on. Mm -hmm. um, so they they visit there and I guess to that that that's apart from it being part of the 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 daily routine, but it would also be based on information you would have uh, analyzed having studied what you you collected in the traps and so on right yeah mm -hmm. well every friday when we go to check the trap there will be other officers working on the outside mm -hmm. so then we don't only eliminating the mosquitoes on the inside but we're eliminating the the breeding sites right. also mm -hmm. now now um with respect to resistance up at the hospital area, have you seen anything like that? Or not much? What, um, breeding site? No, well not the breeding site, but mosquito resistance um, up at the hospital. Um. I guess not much? No, not much. And, 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 and breeding containers up at the hospital? Well, not much. It's mostly um, one or two manhole okay. that is that have water uh -huh. that is not flowing out. Yeah, it will um, bring mosquitoes. Sharon, um, is there anything else you want to tell us before you wrap? Um, 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 well, I know that you love your job. <laughs> I can see that, and and also I see that Miss Child has been around for a while. You know, and you know she's still there. So it tells me that you know she really loves that part of a job um, the closing words are yours with respect to mosquito breeding I, I, I you know what I would, I would ask you to let our viewers know how important it is to keep their surroundings clean well it's very important to make sure that the surroundings are clean make sure that there is no breeding site no container holding water stagnant water and just to protect us you know and keep from dengue and other mosquito virus and Ms. Charles are there any closing words from you? Yes um, what I would like to say um, to the public we don't always depend on vector control and the chemical you the householder have to play your part also because you could eliminate your containers around your house without using the chemical. So and it's always good to keep your place clean. 
Thank you, Miss Holas and Miss Charles. Viewers, there you had it again. And uh, before I wrap, let me just let you know that um, on the 26th, that's today, the Vector Control Fogging Team would be at Grand Dance Housing Scheme, inclusive of the Frequent Industrial Park. And tomorrow, the 27th, the Limes, inclusive of the Housing Scheme, and the operation begins at 5 p.m. Then on Wednesday the 28th and on Thursday the 29th, they will be at Montout and the surrounding areas as well as Grandans Valley and respectively. The times for Montout on Wednesday is 5 p.m. and Grandans Valley is 4 p.m. Remember guys that um, you have a responsibility to keep your surroundings clean and to keep your, your premises free of mosquito breeding sites. That's it for today monday and the next chapter thank you for joining us i look forward to seeing you next week right here with me kevin frederick at the gis television studio and on this note i would like to say thank you to my entire production team to abby and shabazz and nihal and you know all of those guys here everyone at the gis we love you and we say bye bye see you next monday thank you